Hello. Um, good to be there. And when, when organized um, called me to, to invite me to, to, to give a speech, I, uh, I said, yes, of course, I will come and give a speech and on, on what topic. And uh, 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 like open educational resources, how we did it in Poland, uh, uh, about either the Internet Library, um, my foundation is running uh, or, or something or, 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 or on uh, licenses. And they said, no, no, it's a keynote speech. Uh, so keynote speech. So it's like, okay, so I'm actually allowed to talk what matters to me, not you. And uh, um, and um, so it was, it was, it was fine. But then they told me that I, I got like one hour and half, and, and, and it was like reflection. Oh, 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 one hour and half. I pro I probably don't have that much interesting things, you know, to say. Um, but hopefully, uh, organizers shaved it down to uh, one hour and seven minutes, so we will be fine. Um, uh, but also, uh, keynote speech, it's like w one directional form of communication. I don't really like it. I don't like presentations um, uh, as well. Presentations kill the dialogue. If I have a presentation, I cannot engage in a discussion with audience, right? Because I need to follow the presentation. This is horrible. Um, uh, uh, let's send all the presentations to hell. Uh, I would like to, 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 so I would like to give a keynote debate, not a keynote uh, presentation. And uh, I welcome you to, to, you know, to engage with me and, uh, and, and boo me and discuss me and, and, um, uh, uh, and so on. And, uh, uh, and why, when I was thinking about what what should be the title of the of the of this keynote, I I I, I, I thought, okay, uh, it should it, the, the there is a feeling I have like all the time for the past ten years when I'm working with uh, free educational resources, it's uh, the feeling that I'm part of something bigger, o always part of something bigger. So. And I, I, I told the, the, the organizers that, um, uh, that the title sh should be "We are always part of something bigger," but obviously this didn't get through. And in the program, it's just keynote. Well, uh, so so uh, the, the, first of all, I would like to ask you why you are here. Why why you are here working on uh, open educational resources, free educational resources? What's you know what's what's the basic belief we have? Is it that uh, uh, open educational resources make uh, cheaper, more accessible uh, educational materials? Is, is, is it that? Raise your hands. If you, if, you, if, if you think this is the most important reason. One per, okay. So two. So do you think that it is because uh, uh, you believe in a system where teachers uh, choose their educational materials freely. Is it that the main reason you are here? No one. Or uh, uh, maybe you, that's because you think that the like, uh, uh, less structurized, bottom-up educational system is, is, is much better than the one we, uh, we got you know, from 19th century, the, you know, the Prussian school. Is it that? Okay, some of you. And uh, do you think that the ability to 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 adapt and translate resources is your, like a like a killer feature? Is it that one person? Okay, who didn't raise hand? Okay, I would like to hear from you. For me, it's, it's a vision of a, a universal higher education that's a free and quality. Okay, another person. One sentence each. I think that education is a right. It's one of the only ways to help to make that come about for absolutely everyone is to use of these types of Perfect. Someone else. There were much more hands. The capillarity that you get with open education improves the life of people, and that's it. Okay. Like everyone who wanted to say said, okay. So I I'm here because um, uh, uh, I believe that knowledge, uh, the information, should not be private, should not be private property, and I believe in a free flow uh, uh, of the information, and um, and uh, uh, probably uh, 
and I, I and I believe in a free speech, and um, uh, and uh, I think that making information a product was one of the worst developments of our civilization, and uh, to uh, and probably and so let let me tell you my story because uh, pro because probably I'm very unusual for a keynote speaker. You, know, you got a keynote speaker you never heard of, right? So uh, 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 so. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm with the Open Educational Resources Movement for 10 years now, and, uh, but it all began much, much earlier. It, it began in the mid-90s, probably, for me, when I became a poet. And, uh, and um, uh, so, you know, you, you know, when you are young and, and you write poetry, and you always, and there is, there is like imperative in a, in a Western culture that, that, that art should be original. I mean, we got it from the Renaissance, basically. The art, I mean, and we value art only if it's original. The originality is the way we, you know, we weight the art, and and uh, and if it's if it's if it's original, it's good. If it's not, it's bad. That's that's the only, the the, the only uh, the, the, the the only way we we uh, we. Uh, mm, we value art, so I, I wanted to be to be original, and and uh, and uh, uh, and uh, I developed a, a, a style which we, later we called neo neolinguism, uh, which was obviously um, uh, a, a poetry very heavily uh, uh, being constructed on a language level. I mean, playing with words, with meanings, and uh, and uh, and a lot of reuse of. Of um, a, a lot of reuse of um, uh, of well of other people's work and uh, and um, we get, we get, we had a small group of poets um, uh, we published manifesto this manu and um, and we, we were moderately successful in um, uh, in that and uh, and uh, uh, my, my basic experience as a poet was that I basically grab whatever I want and you know and and Add different meanings and 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 and, and push it to the, back to the world, and um, and I also um, um, became journalist because you cannot you know I'm mean, as a poet you cannot really make a living out of it so you need to get a real job and the real, my my real job was journalism so I was involved in uh, I, I, and I was writing uh, book reviews for like ten years uh, but in uh, in and uh, but I was also very fond of computers and because no one in in and uh, there was like internet bubble so I got hired to the uh, to the to the web magazine the very f one of the very first ones in in, in Poland and uh, I, I so wow this is this internet it's really interesting so I began began to, to you know to 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 read on internet and. Um, um, uh, and, I, and so, what are the interesting people which are talking about internet? What it is and how it works? Those interesting people. Uh, 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 there was a group of people uh, sitting in Internet Society Poland. There was just one organization back then, which uh, uh, like civic organization, which was taking interest in internet. That was Internet Society Poland. So I, I quickly became a, a member of the Internet Society, and um, and the, the there was a, the, and there was a, a, an accident, I would say. Yeah, because uh, the invitation came from uh, from United States for a conference uh, to inter Internet Society in Poland, and just like three days before the conference, the person who was assigned, you know, to go and represent Internet Society uh, had some family problems or something, and uh, uh, he couldn't go. So it was like a, like an email. Okay, who can get an American visa uh, in one day? <laughs> Or, and that was like a big problem in Poland. Uh, uh, um, in, in, it was the year was 2004, I, I believe. And I was a journalist for journal ju for ju journalists get a fast track in an embassy. So I said, okay, I, I, I can go probably. I, I, I take a, I take a cab. I go, I go to the embassy. I got the visa in one day, and I I, I was flown to United States. You know, out of nowhere, and um, and. Uh, and so there was a conference, and and uh, and there was a uh, and uh, the, the the keynote speaker of the conference was Ibn Moglen. Do you know Ibn Moglen? Who knows the name? One person, Ibn Moglen. 
we'll be talking more on Ibn Moglan <laughs> today. So, uh, and, um, and uh, Ibn Moglan is a lawyer for uh, Free Software Foundation. Free Software Foundation was, um, uh, was fighting for, I mean, now it's like more than 30, 30 years for free software on computers and uh, their mission is to, to, to get people, to give people control over machines they use to communicate with other people because if we don't have the control of the machine then we are doomed basically because someone else decides which messages go through am I being monitored and censored and so on and so on and so on. Very important thing. Free software is a big thing. So uh, it, the year is 2004 or something or maybe 2005 and Ibn Moglan says okay the war for free software is won. We did it. It was, it was I, I, so back then it was shocking. It was shocking information because, um, uh, uh, because Microsoft was, you know, uh, was the biggest game in, 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 in the forest and, and um, the king of the jungle. Uh, everyone feared Microsoft and um, it's not a, a company like today, which is like moderately small, quite friendly company uh, 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 right now. Um, uh, and, uh, uh, and it seemed that, that the, the people will always use proprietary software on their computers. And even Moglen says, the, f the, f the, f the fight for free software, software is over, we won. And he was right. Uh, we, we know that now, uh, because, because, because the web took over, the operating system doesn't really matter anyway. Uh, most of us use free software on a daily basis if not, if it's not an operating system, probably it's most of the computer programs you use, either running on your computer or either uh, soft in, uh, in software as service. I mean, it's the you know the the, the, the so-called cloud, right? So, and he, and 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 the, 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 when 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 he finished his 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 talk, there were questions from the audience, and and someone asked, "Okay, we won. So, what's the next big thing?" And even Moglen said, the next big thing is education. And for me, it was like, okay, now I, now I know what's going to be a next big thing. Let's think about it, right? <laughs> so I got back to Poland, and, um, and my mother is, uh, my mother is, um, uh, is, is, uh, is a, is a school, school director. I mean, now she's retired, but she was a, sc a school director b back then. So we sat together with a, a friend of mine, Wadek Majewski from Internet Society Poland, and my mother, and we spent like endless hours discussing, okay, so we know, the, you know what the free software is, we know what education is, can we apply the methods of free software development and free licenses to educational materials. And there was the you know, idea of, okay, so let's start a project for, I don't know, let's call it um, free textbooks. <laughs> free textbooks. So, and so, I, 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 so I, I, it was a long you know, hours talking with my wife, and I said, okay, honey, I'm going to quit my job as a journalist, well-paid job. Um, uh, when I do nothing, only read books and write reviews, and I will start a foundation which will give me no money at all. So you will support our family for the next three years. And she said, okay, you got three years to make the foundation up and running. If you don't make it in three years, you get, you get the real job. So, 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 so this, is how, this is how modern Poland foundations started. Basically, it was some, uh, it was subsidized by my wife, um, and uh, so so and uh, and we began working on, on on a project called free textbooks, and um, um, and uh, and did there some and and uh, and uh, 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 it was the, it was the year two thousand six. And I, I published an article in a newspaper the, about the idea of free textbooks and, and what, we should, what we should do. And uh, uh, like uh, no one called. I mean, no Ministry of Education. I mean, it was a major newspaper. No Ministry of Education or something. But called me a, a, a guy from Soros Foundation from Budapest. And he said, okay, th this is a very interesting article. Just by accident, you know, we are also discussing those things. And um, uh, uh, let's meet. So this is how we got like initial support from Open Society Foundation, and also this is how I got invited to the to Cape Town in September 2007 
to draft Cape Town uh, 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 Cape Town Declaration. Actually, uh, actually in Krakow there are, there are now two people from which were the original drafting team. This is me and uh, Delia Brown uh, from Australia. She's probably sitting in a in a next um, uh, in a next um, uh, uh, in, in the next um, uh, 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 next room. So uh, so uh, uh, I need my notes, you know. It's not that easy. So you know uh, the the free textbooks project was a disaster because uh, there was only one free knowledge project back then, and the project was called Wikipedia. So we imagined that we can use the you know Wikipedia software and Wikipedia methodology of developing content and apply it to textbooks, which is obviously not true. And we 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 learned that hard way. That you just cannot do this. That the textbooks are are um, uh, um, uh, textbooks are just too big to be effectively crowdsourced. You need an organization to to uh, to write uh, uh, a textbook, and, and writing a textbook just has to be a full uh, a full time job. Um, so. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, because uh, but so but there, there were other opportunities in in uh, like uh, uh, in 2009 nine, uh, there was a small project by Minister of Education which was hugely important because it set precedent and precedent is very important because once you have a precedent you can uh, go to you know to policymakers and said this was already done let's do it again it's completely different that saying let's do something radical radically new no one tried before right <laughs> so the policy makers always try to be on the safe side so there was a project for right for for uh, for teaching for teaching polish kids living abroad in 2009 there was already a huge diaspora in united kingdom and ireland because all the people you know went there for jobs and um uh, close to two million people, so it was very urgent. We needed to do it quickly and now. And so there, there was me, and I said, "Okay, so I, I can, I can, I can participate in this project and uh, take care of writing the textbook, textbook for teaching Polish language to Polish kids living abroad." And in like a crazy time, like half a year, we just did it. We, we wrote these textbooks in you know team of four people, uh, and we published that under free license. Uh, on the Ministry of Education servers. So, and this, this set precedent. And in 2007, we also organized a coalition for, uh, for open education in Poland. Uh, um, uh, so in 2009, 2010, the coalition was, uh, was well established. We were growing, we organized uh, meetings and, and, and we, we, we trained hundreds of people every year um, it was crazy time. It was going, you know, all over Poland, and you know, with the message on how to apply free licenses to the educational content. And uh, but it was, uh, and we, we published, uh, and we published a lot of position papers, you know, and and analyses and so on and so on. And Ministry of Education never called us. And um, so. So so and it was it was kind of frustrating. Okay, so it's like. It's five years now. We are, I'm doing that for five years now, and no one is paying attention. Okay, we, we we organized a group of people. It's not just me and my laptop. Okay, it's like 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 a lot of people, and 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 the policymakers just don't pay attention to us. We got we got the solutions, like working solutions. We can prove it. So in 2011, I'm I'm, I'm sitting and drinking coffee with a friend of mine, and uh, the 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 and and. Uh, and the 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 civic uh, the, the civic platform the, the the party which was ruling back back then just won the second term in parliamentary elections and the prime minister is going to give you know like a the most important speech you know as a new prime minister i mean obviously this is the second term in that evening and it's like 2 p.m. and um, and and a friend of mine is getting a phone call and she says like yes something on education Oh, just, 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 just hang on, and she and she tells me, Jarek, you know the advisors for the prime minister just called me, that uh, that he's furious that there is nothing on education in the in the speech draft, so you got like five minutes to to to, to you know to 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 give something you know on education. 
to the prime minister's speech. So, I, so, and it was exactly, I mean, it, uh, as in the movies, you know, on napkin <laughs> with, a, with a pencil, I wrote four sentences that we will run, you know, the national project for free textbooks, which will be free to everyone. And um, so, 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 so I turned on TV that evening, and, and it's like all over, it's like, there will be free textbooks, free as in zero, like costless for everyone, which is huge because in Poland it's, it's parents to pay for textbooks for everyone. And, the, and, and my phone calls ringing, and this time it's Ministry of Education because they are completely shocked. I mean, they send the ideas of improving this and, you know, like, and, and that, you know, like small changes. This is not what Prime Minister wants, never. I mean, the Prime Minister always wants, you know, big things for such a speech. So, so how we can do this? So the next three months I, I, sp I spent in Prime Minister office uh, drafting <laughs> The, pro the drafting the project. I mean, it was it was it was four of us. It was just four four people. It was me. I, I, I drafted the, the the textbook part. Uh, Alicia Patsevich uh, 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 drafted uh, drafted uh, teachers training part. Um, Vitek Przetechowski uh, uh, drafted um, uh, drafted uh, infrastructure part, uh, internet uh, uh, at schools, and uh, Alek Tarkowski. Uh, drafted evaluation and and research part. So it was just for people. So this problem, this it was completely rewritten by Minister of Education later on. But we got it, as, and as you know it, because there was a, there was a, we got it. The, the 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 free textbooks, the open educational resources in Poland is done deal. It's um it's done. It's not interesting anymore. It's you know uh, it's now it's about you know. <laughs> Helping f little things, you know, improving there and you know pushing, pushing this. But it's 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 um, um uh, it's um it's done deal. So, uh, but is it? Because uh, because um, mm, it is in terms that kids, yes, they do have textbooks which are published under free license on the internet and they are accessible for free. But did we, did we achieve our goals? And this is the part which makes me, which makes me, uh, which makes me adapting. Because most of the promises of free educational resources are in fact not really delivered. And, uh, and uh, oh, for example, 10 years ago, the teachers effectively has, had the ability to remix and reuse everything as they see fit because the level of copyright enforcement was very low and the copyright was very flexible. We got, we got, back then we got a wonderful, very flexible, educational exceptions. It's not the case anymore. We got a very strict copyright, which was amended like three times during those 10, ten years. Uh, the educational exceptions are not working anymore for internet. That was the change which was pushed just last year. Uh, and in the same time, we spent a lot of, you know, it was a lot of, of, of efforts to actually tell the teachers that copyright exists and they need to abide. And as a result, probably they have much less freedom than they had. So, uh, because uh, we are always part of something bigger and this time we are just part of the copyright wars. This is what we are. This is what we do. We are taking part in the copyright wars. And um, so, so uh, if my job is to free the people from oppression, and uh, I 
believe this is this is what I was I was trying to achieve to free the people from oppression from oppression of of you know the artificial monopolies on information in uh, uh, in, in, in uh, I'm not I'm not that sh I mean I'm not sure anymore that I have won so let's talk about copyright uh, Let's talk about copyright. Um, uh, we are here because copyright makes it hard to disseminate knowledge. Uh, uh, it makes it hard to use and reuse uh, of materials. And uh, it makes it hard to basically to do our job, right? That's, this is why we are here. And, um, uh, if not copyright, we should, I mean, there, there would be no reason to meet and discuss this. We'd be meeting probably, you know, on, on technical conferences about, you know, technical solutions for schools, yes, that would be, and universities, that would be, that would be. But, uh, but we are here because basically we are trying to fix copyright in a way, or, you know, like patch copyright. Uh, mm, uh, so let's talk about copyright because copyright basically is a, is a great sw swindle. Um, uh, he, uh, uh, and uh, and the and uh, and the basic question, if we if we take a look on copyright, is is who profits? Who profits and uh, why c control of the information became the central problem of um, uh, modern uh, 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 of modern um, uh, society uh, uh, so so copyright is a is a is a global system which regulates the trade of ideas and uh, allows for the privatization um, e, uh, uh, and there are two traditions for uh, uh, in copyright there's anglo-saxon tradition and continental tradition the Anglo-Saxon tradition says that, uh, which is like in United States and, and Great Britain, says that we need copyright for the progress of the useful uh, of, of the useful arts. The copyright exists because we need to produce more works. That's the the reason why copyright exists. In continental um, in a continental um, uh, system, uh, which stems from basically from the from the French Revolution. Uh, the idea is different. The idea is we got cop we, copyright exists because there is a, a unbreakable, invisible bond between author and the work he created, and the copyright is just the reflection of the existence of this mystical connection between an author and his work. Um, so uh, uh, the. Uh, uh, so the, the Anglo-Saxon uh, Anglo uh, tradition is very pragmatic. The continental, um, the continental, uh, the continental, uh, 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 the continental is uh, is uh, uh, less so. And uh, this is and this is um, uh, and uh, the concept of the copyright is relatively new. I mean the very f I mean the very first the very first like modern copyright systems. Uh, were created after uh, in France um, uh, in uh, in the in the beginning of the, of the 19th century. In uh, in Poland, the first copyright was introduced by Russian Tsar, because Russian Tsars were always you know you know looking what's happening in France. The France was you know the the, the cultural capital of the world back then. So and they were uh, and the, and the Tsars always like like they were trying you know to imitate that in a very peculiar <laughs> Russian way uh, to, to imita imitate those advances. And so, so they, they saw, okay, this is this new concept of copyright. We need to introduce it. it was, the year was um, uh, 1828, I believe, or maybe a little bit later. And, uh, but the Tsar didn't know where to put it. And the only, the only, and the only piece of legislation which seemed somewhat, uh, which seemed, which seemed somewhat uh, similar was the censorship uh, uh, laws. So uh, uh, at the beginning in Poland, the copyright was part of the censorship uh, 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 laws, which I think is very, 
is very is very ironic and um, the concept is very new and um, and uh, I, I did some very you know it's a keynote so I can talk about what I like right <laughs> so I did some some very interesting research on okay so uh, uh, okay do we have something about on copyright in Bible uh, in Bible and so 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 if you if you want you know to look for such information you you are going to look at the Jewish tradition because the, this is the tradition in which you know they, they analyze you know like every verse and yes there is something in the Bible so the, the 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 Jewish tradition doesn't know the concept of the copyright as an ownership of ideas but they have a concept of author of uh, of recognition of an author it's very strong in Jewish tradition in Jewish tradition when you know say something you always say say as Rab Moshe ben Moses said, right? And um, because uh, and and do you know do you know do you know how Talmud looks? Do you know Talmud? Okay, do you know how the page of the Talmud looks? Like there's like a, there is one sentence from the from the from the Torah. Then there is Mishnah, which is like an early commentary to the Torah. Then there is Gemara, which is an early com uh, commentary to the Mishnah. Then there are commentaries of the fathers, and then there are commentaries to commentaries to commentaries of the com to, uh, commentaries. Right? This is this is the Talmud. So Mishnah says, whoever it's just, it's very early. It's like the, it's 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 the beginning of the of the of the um, uh, uh, it's it's the year two or two three hundred. Uh, um, uh, so Mishnah says, whoever shares the knowledge with the world, with the people, in the name of an author, saves the world. This is what Mishnah says. So there's a concept that sharing the knowledge is saving the world, but only if you do it in the name of an author. This is wonderful. This is beautiful, right? Uh, so, but. This is commentary in Mishnah. So, which is so? So, my question was: Okay, what's the passage? I mean, what? what I mean, they they got it from the Torah, right? So, what? What's what's exactly the text in in? Uh, and the text is found in a book of Esther, and and the, and um, and the quotation is so. And the Queen Esther get to the uh, uh, talked to the King Mordechai. Um, in, uh, to, to the king, king Ahasuerus, in the name of the Mordechai, and uh, okay, Queen Esther talked to King Ahasuerus in the name of the Mordechai. Okay, what, what's the context? I mean, it doesn't make sense. What's the context? So obviously there was like a, like a plot to kill King Ahasuerus by two eunuchs, two royal eunuchs, and uh, Mordechai somehow figured that out. And he told the queen, and the queen got to the king and told him that there is a plot to kill him, and she told that in the name of the Mordechai. So, it, so she didn't pretend that, that it was her, you know, to, to, uh, to you know, to, to uh, how to say that in English? Um, Odkryć, wykryć. Discover this plot. I mean, she, she, you know, she, 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 she gave the proper, you know, credits. The proper, the, the proper, the proper uh, authorship recognition, uh, and um, and the and the king killed those two, killed those two eunuchs. So that's, so I, I think it's also also interesting to to to, to the, the only story, loosely connected to copyright, in the Bible we have is about killing two eunuchs. So, uh, but so that was I get. Let's get back to the to the main topic. So. Uh, so the copyright, the copyright is important because uh, the copyright is important because um, because uh, information is uh, is 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 not a it's not a thing, it's immaterial. So if we want to trade information, we need uh, we, we 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 cannot do this uh, without the state. The state and the police and the courts. We need a monopoly system to enforce the trade of the information. In the old times, like when we were, we, we've been trading the, you know, like physical things, it was very easy, right? You go, you 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 get to the bazaar and you, and uh, and 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 you and you buy something. 
for information you need the state. You cannot have uh, intellectual monopoly uh, without the, st the state. Why? Because the information can be, can be replicated basically with zero marginal cost. The, the information may be replicated for free. Uh, the books have been the first mass-produced uh, uh, mass produced, uh, uh, mm. good, right. The, uh, it's not the, uh, the, you know, it's not Fort T. It's, it's the book to be, you know, uh, to be, to be, to be, uh, to, 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 to be mass produced. And, 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 and they've been very cheap, in fact. And um, uh, so, so, and the, the source of the value is the scarcity. So if, so you need to create an artificial scarcity to create a value. And this is exactly what copyright is doing. It's artificial, it's, it's, it's made up. Um, and um, uh, so, uh, 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 so, uh, so the, the copyright is intellectual monopoly. But we don't use this phrase when we talk about copyright. We don't say, you know, intellectual uh, monopoly anymore. We've been talking like that on copyright in 19th century. Even at the beginning of the 20th century, we've been calling copyright intellectual monopoly. But now we are calling it intellectual property uh, because uh, intellectual monopoly, you know, in, 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 in a neoliberal uh, vocabulary, it, it, monopoly, you know, is a, is, a, is a really bad word. You don't like this word. So if you want to push your agenda, uh, uh, you, you, you want to call it a property because it sounds much nicer. Property is something you protect. Monopoly is something you fight, right? So, um, uh, but, um, uh, but, 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 uh, uh, but anyway, it is intellectual, uh, intellectual uh, uh, monopoly. So, um, uh, and, um, and uh, so this is artificial monopoly. And it exists for one reason only. It exists because it's a very useful tool to uh, exert money from the unprivileged one to the privileged one. This is exactly how copyright is working. This is a tool to get money from the people who don't have the privileges and give it to the people who do have the privileges. And um, most of the time, we are on the receiving side. We are the ones to get the money. So we, so we don't really you know, recognize this pattern. We don't like it. Um, but um, uh, and, and, and we would rather you know, use different you know, terms and words to, to, you know, to hide the fact that we are the, on the receiving end and of the, I would say, not truly just privilege. Of course, copyright has its merits and, and it, it's useful, but it is what it is. And such a copyright as it exists now is not really beneficial to culture and education. And we know it from a lot of studies on, on, on public domain that copyright is the major obstacle in making uh, making uh, knowledge available. And we know that, that after publication, the ability to access the work falls down and it, and, 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 it, it, and it changes only after the work falls into the public domain. We, but that happens, uh, unfortunately, 70 years after author's death in European Union, and if you are lucky and live in Canada, it's only 50 years. But it may soon change because there is uh, uh, there, there, there are those new treaties that the USA is pushing uh, hard to um, uh, to make it to make it 70 years in Canada as well. So, uh, so who benefits? This is like this is the important question: Who benefits? And um, on the uh, uh, so. Uh, on the individual level, this is somewhat simple, and uh, uh, this is uh, the, 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 benefit, the, the benefits the benefits the the people who control the work, and most of the times it's just publishers, because um, uh, because 
because uh, because uh, authors don't really have a power you know to negotiate contracts most of the time so the publishers and other intermediaries amass um, uh, uh, amass um, uh, 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 copyrights uh, but it's also interesting to look on the uh, to look at this topic on the macroeconomic level because um, because uh, uh, it's important to understand what happens in, in, in copyright policy uh, um, and uh, how this copyright and how, how this modern copyright is being established on a global scale and it will be impossible to, to understand what's happening without you know, looking at the money. And the answer who benefit uh, on the macroeconomic level is very simple. There are just two countries who, which export more intellectual property than import. Could you name those countries? Yes, exactly. Whoa, that's impressive. <laughs> it's USA and Japan and um, all the other countries, including European Union, are net importers. What that means? That means that the global copyright system is designed in a way which makes us import basically fresh air, I mean nothing, and send out real money. That's the system. And if you look, and if you look at how copyright treaties and you know econ economy treaties are being been, uh, are, are being pushed. You can see the forces. Uh, you, there is TPP trade agreement, which is just to be adopted in United States and you know all Pacific area, and uh, it's designed to make the, the 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 payments to the United States and Japan even bigger. That's that's it by making copyright more strict more repressive and uh, and, uh, and, 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 and pushing people all over the world to abide to those laws who benefit someone else. This is exactly what happened in Poland in the past 10 years. This is something which happened when I, this is, this is, this is why I began this, you know, this speech about what we achieved. And um, so, um, uh, so uh, uh, this is very so, and uh, and the, the the history is very ironic because, um, for example, the first inter international copyright convention was called Bern Convention, and who was pushing the Bern Convention in the end of the 19th century? Uh, century? It was the France, which was a you know cultural capital back then, and France wanted to make sure that. If someone is buying a book of Proust, is sending money to, to France. And the, the one and only country, you know, which, which, which for decades didn't sign the Berne Convention was United States. Because back then, the United States was net importer of, uh, of, 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 of intellectual uh, uh, property. And uh, because it was relying on the production of United, of cultural production of United Kingdom, right? So the United States signed the Bird Conversion very late, in uh, actually in the 80s um, uh, uh, of the 20th century, um, because at this point they were net exporters with the Hollywood and and um, and uh, and so and so on. So. Um, and it's note to and it's it's it's, uh, it's it's very it's very important also to note that the copyright will stay with us and uh, and other intellectual monopolies because also it's a very useful tool for co for corporate money laundering because what's the value of the work if the system is artificial there is no market to decide to decide what's the value of the work so the, the value of the work is what the owner the, 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 the says it's worth. I mean, the, the, you know, the, 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 the scientific magazine may be like $20 or maybe $20,000. What's the difference? Just, you know, the opinion of, of the publisher. 
so, uh, uh, and this is exactly what, what's happening. I mean, if you got too much money, you know, in one packet, let you know, let's let's pay for a trademark. That's very easy. How much money we need to? How much money we need to transfer? That's the price of the trademark, right? This is this is this is this is this is how uh, how 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 it's it's happening. So the system is too useful for certain players, you know, to be abolished. So it will um, so it will. Uh, 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 so it will uh, it will it will stay um, uh, uh, with us. So this is important for us because we are um, we are fighting the results of a very long copyright battle, and uh, for especially for developing countries um, such as Poland. Uh, uh, and others, um, uh, the the, uh, uh, the the system is getting worse and worse. It it got worse with uh, with the with the TRIPS treaty, which uh, introduced to to which was um, uh, uh, you need to you need to to, to, to to sign a TRIPS if you want to join World Trade Organization. And obviously, most of the countries want to, to to join World Trade Organization because of the benefits. But if you if you want to you know to rip off those benefits, you need to introduce a strong copyright into into your legal system, and it introduced free free step tests to 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 to, to, to many countries. And the free step test is basically a tool to make sure that the the scope of the educational exceptions will be very limited. So the countries are not free to say, OK, like anything can be used for educational purposes. And uh, we free step test this close to, uh, this close to, um, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to impossible. And if you do, you need to pay. This is exactly how it works in uh, 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 how it works in Poland. Uh, so, uh, so it was so the trip was a serious blow to all the countries which um, uh, relied on fair use to make sure that their citizens benefit from access to uh, to uh, um, uh, 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 to works and uh, and and this oppressive system is being pushed. In Africa, in Asia, everywhere, and uh, most of the countries sign without really understanding what's going on, what's happening, what will be the the result. Um, so, uh, so let's get back to to open educational resources or free educational resources, as I call it, because I have a fear that. Uh, in a way, we are we are building a vast library of free books. We are making available, you know, the, the vast amount of free knowledge for anyone to use and reuse. But in the same time, uh, we are we may it's we may uh, maybe taking the role of useful idiots. Of the people who you know will be will be taken around to show that within this absurd, strict, restrictive copyright system, you can do something good, and uh, that and just maybe, maybe uh, we are making things worse, not better, and. Uh, uh, this is this is this is my fear because I see the pattern, um, the pattern in in uh, in in how businesses around distribution of information on the internet work. Basically, we got two economical models. I I, I, I like to call them the Amazon model and the Facebook model. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, the first one is is distribution of works if you pay. If you register and log in and pay, and then you get access to works. 
This is how Amazon works. This is how Spotify works, uh, and so on. And then there is the Facebook model or YouTube model, which is basically putting everything to access for free, but then you need to watch advertisements. And um, and of course, in the real world, um, uh, in the real world, there 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 always was. Um, uh, 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 there's always a mix of those two approaches. Uh, but those are the two basic economical models for making business on information on the internet. And, uh, and uh, all, the other, all the other models are being pushed outside of the legal system. Um, for there is a very nice example there was a there was a Russian there was a Russian service called all of mp3.ru uh, which was running because of the wide scope of the fair use in Russian copyright law it was it was legal but when Russian wanted to join the, the WTO World Trade Organization there was only one demand from United States it was uh, and it was it was close the all of mp3.ru and it was legal but anyway the owners got sued and uh, and uh, and and uh, what other models we have we have wikipedia which is which is which is being run on donations and um, and uh, 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 but all the costless models like torrents are being effectively delegalized why? Because the existence of technology which allows to access and distribute works without the need of the capital investment, which is without the need of running central servers, is the only thing which endangers the ability to make money on the internet in Amazon and Facebook model. Yeah, that's the that's the reason that why we got we got we got torrents the legalized, and the, the and and the and the policymakers uh, are much less strict on um, uh, on on uh, on on services. Uh, in Poland, we got we got Homikoi, uh, which is slowly legalizing itself. It's kind of mega upload. You know, mega upload. It ceased to exist. The mega upload didn't want to adapt, didn't want to, you know, to start paying. This is why it was closed. Homikoi started paying, so it wasn't closed. So they are much less strict on such services, much more strict on, 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 on something entirely, entirely new. So, so, so we are always part of something bigger, and we need to think big scale to understand, to understand um, uh, uh, What's um, what 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 role we play, you know, in this in this global circus? So, so uh, one way to to think about our role is to learn from people who did it first, and the people who did it first were the free software people. They did it first, way ahead of us, and. What, what we can learn from free software people? First of all, it's that licensing matters. Licensing matters. It's not, it's, it's not that you, know, you may choose any, any license as long as it's, you know, it makes publishing on the internet you know, possible. No, licensing matters. The free licenses are obviously way better to non-free licenses. And copyleft licenses are way better than non-copyleft licenses. Do you understand the difference between copyleft licenses and non-copyleft licenses? No. Okay. So uh, the, copy, the, the the free licenses, the free licenses are the uh, uh, as as defined by the Richard Stallman. Uh, Richard Stallman defined the free licenses as the licenses which allow for four things, which is to run the program. It's I mean he was a free software guy to run the program for any purpose, to study how the program works, to redistribute copies of the program, to improve the program, 
and uh, distribute the copies, okay, for freedoms of Stallman. So uh, that's very interesting um, uh, why, because someone said that, okay, why redistribution and redistribution of Im improved versions are two different points, and, uh, and, uh, and the answer is because when you redistribute the program, you know, it's, you, you are just, you know, uh, uh, you, you, you are not doing anything, you know, you, you got it, you send it. But uh, uh, if you adapt it and give to someone else, you are doing that not for yourself, you are doing that for someone. So this is, where this is exactly the point at which community starts. Um, so, so and, uh, and this definition was very influential in what we do, because uh, if, we, uh, uh, if we read the, the, the Cape Town Declaration, uh, the, uh, it, there is a sentence that um, it's built on the belief that everyone should have the freedom to use, customize, improve, and redistribute educational resources. That's the Stallman definition, right? Written right into the text of the, of the, of the Cape Town Declaration. And uh, then uh, there, is the, 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 there is the definition of free cultural goods, which is the definition which, which, which uh, for example, uh, 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 which Wikipedia uses, and a lot of free culture projects uses, and, 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 and even Creative Commons uses. I mean, it was forced to, to, to use it in a way. Uh, which is, um, the, which is uh, the definition says, freedom to use the work and enjoy the benefits of using it, the freedom to study the work, freedom to make and redistribute copies, freedom to make changes and improvements. That's the Stallman definition. So the, the lesson, so, the, so that's, the, 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 that's the definition of what free means. This is the reason why I say free educational resources, not open, because, because open means nothing. And the free, we, we got a definition, we got a standard. The free is solid. The open is bug and, and. So, uh, so, uh, 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 so, so it's important to use the free licenses. And within free licenses, you, you, you differentiate between copyleft and non-copyleft. The copyleft licenses are those when you adapt and redistribute the, the new version of a work has to be under the same license. So the non-copyleft uh, licenses make it possible to, to, to appropriate the work. I mean, if you adapt it, you say, okay, the original work was free, but my version, my translation or something is not. So copyleft forbids that. And if we look at the software world, I mean, all the software which was under non-copyleft uh, license now is effectively privatized and, uh, and, and, and was appropriated, like Mac OS X, uh, the Apple uh, uh, operation system, that was, was, was built on the, non, the free non-copyleft version of Unix. And, uh, and uh, with Android, which was built on the, on, uh, on the, uh, on the, on the free software under copyleft license, uh, Google is trying hard, but it's, it really cannot appropriate it. I mean, you got free versions of Android adapted, you know, and clean it, you know, from all, all this advertising and monitoring your device and so on and so on, uh, available on the net. It's not easy, but it, it's possible to install free version of Android because it was copyleft at software. Uh, and I believe that the same logic works in the field of educational resources. If we produce resources under free, but under, I mean, if not free, it doesn't matter. I mean, if you, if you are going to publish uh, under non-free license, just, you know, use basic copyright. Don't try to pretend that you are open, really. <laughs> use free license. But if you, if, you, if you publish under free license, use copyleft license, because this protects the, the right to use it and reuse it much better uh, um, uh, for the future. But, um, mm, so this is also why I was absolutely furious, furious when I read the Paris Declaration, Paris Open Access Declaration, which says uh, explicitly 
that uh, the recommendation is to publish uh, uh, educational materials under CC BY license. I was furious because, uh, what, first of all, why not? I mean, if why not the def just the, no do the same what everyone else is doing, which is take a definition of free, and uh, and and but if you choose one license, which is bad because you don't want to rely on one organization. I mean, the organization may be brilliant. We we may love this organization, but you don't want to rely on one organization only. So if you choose one license. Why non couple left? Because obviously the history taught us that the couple left is working much better. So probably, again, the answer should be the answer we should look for an answer who benefits. So who benefits from the uh, who benefits from um, uh, 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 from the from the from the uh, proliferation of uh, works which are up to grab. So that's uh, that's important because education is somehow in culture. In culture, free licenses will never work because you cannot substitute the works the way you can substitute the program. If program is doing something, you can take another program which is doing the same thing and you can substitute it. Culture doesn't work like that. In culture, if you, have, if, you, if you want to read Harry Potter, you know, you cannot read something else. Because the Harry Potter is, you know, the book you want to read. There are no substitutes in culture. Education is something in between. In education, there are a lot of things you, you, which you can substitute and this is why in some areas of the education, free licensing is working, but in other areas, it's not working at all because in those areas are where you cannot substitute the work with something else. So we know for sure that the, 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 the free educational resources are not an answer to all our problems, that the copyright system needs to be amended to answer, you know, to, 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 to solve all our problems. But copyright system is not everything. Because we are always part of something bigger, and I got seven minutes. So, um, 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 so, because there are other factors on how we can free the people from the oppression of the privatized ideas and uh, those factors have, have been put down by Ibn Moglen, the guy I began my, 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 my journey with uh, free educational resources in the past 10 years. In, uh, in an article written in 2003 uh, which is called Dot Communist Manifesto, which is, by, by the way, dot, I, I really recommend reading it. It's, um, it's an essay which also is, you know, kind of poetry. He's like a very skilled writer. And, and, but he says, what are the, what, and in this essay, he says, okay, so what we need to free the people from the oppression of privatized ideas, and what we need is, Abolition of all forms of private property in ideas that we discussed already. Withdrawal of all exclusive licenses, privileges and rights to use electromagnetic spectrum. Nullification of all conveyances of permanent title to electromagnetic frequencies. Development of electromagnetic spectrum infrastructure that implements every person's equal right to communicate. This is this is probably the next big thing, because uh, uh, we can we cannot communicate with others freely if we don't control our tools, our computers, our cell phones. This is done. We have free software for that. But also, we cannot communicate with others freely if we do not have control of the network. The communication goes through. 
because there will be gatekeepers. And who is a gatekeeper who has a control of the flow of the information gets the power and gets the money and, 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 and so on. So we need the distributed control over the infrastructure, the communication infrastructure. This is not done. We are, and, and we are nowhere near. Um, then he says, common social development of computer programs. Check, done. Full respect for freedom of speech, including all forms of technical speech. This is important because free licenses and you know making works available is just part of the equation. I mean, in Poland we got we got some 17 different laws which regulate how people communicate with others. So uh, in your countries is probably similar. Uh, we need the legal protection uh, for free speech. Then there is protection for the integrity of creative works. That's, in, that's interesting why he put it. Uh, 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 why he chose integrity over uh, recognition of an author. Ah, come on, this is the, I mean, the, this is the, 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 uh, the recognition of an author is the only widely accepted concept of the copyright, right? And, and so uh, uh, this is something I don't understand why he has, he has chosen integrity of creative work. Maybe because he's a friend of Richard Stallman, and Richard Stallman is very sensitive on this, that no one changes, you know, a letter in, in what he writes. And the last, free and equal access to all publicly produced information and all educational material used in all branches of the public education system. This is what Ibn Moglen wrote in 2003. So in, in January, so it was even before the Paris the Paris publication. He's like uh, 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 so. Open educational resources are part of the knowledge economy and and, and a part of something bigger. And uh, and and thank you for for being with me. And I hope. And I hope that what I what I what I what I did was was useful and and will make you know uh, uh, think on 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 think on it. Uh, and if not, I'm sorry. Uh, um, and um, I also would like to note that probably my, it's also a farewell speech because uh, I'm. Obviously, I'm less and less involved with open educational resources. I stepped down from the coalition um, uh, uh, of open educational resources uh, board uh, this year, and I, di I didn't participate in elections. It's time for you know younger people to take over, and uh, I will be concentrating on other things. And uh, by other things, I probably probably mean that economy of. Uh, economy of in, in, in material goods is the field I would like to explore for the next uh, couple of years. Um, also, the, the foundation is changing. We are getting bigger. We, we are just, um, the Modern Poland Foundation is uh, just joined the partnership with, with the EPF Foundation, uh, which is, a, uh, 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 which is a, a public sector information organization mainly. And uh, we want, uh, and we created something called Fundament. We want to, we want to, to, to we want to, 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 to look, uh, to work in a much less narrow scope, because the problem we are problems we are trying to solve are much more universal than only uh, uh, education, and um, so. So, so, yeah, thank you. And, and I'm just in time. And, and if you want to ask me questions, there's like a break right now, right? So we can, you know, if you would like to sacrifice the, the break to ask me questions, you are welcome.